Today I'm doing something a little ridiculous with this 3D printed airless basketball. If you watched the airless basketball video that Uncle Jesse did on his YouTube channel, you would have seen that he coated one of the airless basketballs in 3D gloop, and he had some pretty good success both bounce and durability wise with it. But the basketball he printed was fairly small, and I never saw a full size version of that, so I decided that's what I was going to do in this video. For those of you who don't know what 3D gloop is, it's an adhesive compound that's designed to fuse and hold 3D printed pieces together, but we're going to use it on this Super PLA Plus filament by Overture to see what kind of basketball we can make with it. Of course, the first thing to do is just to actually print the basketball, and then I went out to Walmart and got this $1 bowl that I was going to use to pour the 3D gloop in, and then swirl the basketball in the bowl to coat it evenly with the 3D gloop. Next, I took the basketball out to the shed and prepared the pump I'd be using. I didn't have an air cannon, but this pump is pretty powerful, so I'm just going to shoot air in between the pockets to get the 3D gloop out of the pockets as much as I can. After that I got my respirator and my gloves because safety first there's a lot of chemicals in 3D gloop so you really don't want to be breathing or touching that stuff. When I was good to go I went ahead and poured in a bunch of 3D gloop into the bottom of the bowl and then just started swirling the Super PLA Plus basketball around in the 3D gloop. Since I was using a double lattice file compared to the single lattice file that it looked like Uncle Jesse used I was having a hard time getting the 3D gloop into the internal lattice, but after I was happy with it, I hung it up on a hook and then I shot as much air as I could through all the crevices to try and get as much of the 3D gloop out of the pockets as I could. And since I had an old cracked Piba basketball lying around, I decided to just see what the 3D gloop would do on a cracked Piba basketball to see if I could hopefully fuse it together and have it bounce again. After it cured, it was was looking pretty good but I decided that I really wanted to try and make this work so I thought that I would add another coat of 3D gloop just to make sure that we're coating everything evenly and that I can hopefully get it all the way into the internal lattice too. The process was the same as the first coat that I did but in this coat I decided to completely coat the Piba basketball as well just to see what happens. Here's what it looked like after everything was dried and cured and I have to say I think it looks pretty good considering what we were doing to it. In the Uncle Jesse video, he did his in black and it it was obvious to see that it was coated in 3D gloop, and in this one with the white, it actually seems to hide it pretty good, but at this point, there's nothing left to do but weigh it and give it a bounce test. It ended up weighing about 648 grams. It held up pretty well after the first couple of bounces, but the thing that I noticed right away is that it is incredibly loud. Every time you bounce it, it just echoed all over the place, and I think it's even louder than a regular basketball. It felt like it bounced bounced pretty well as I was bouncing it, so I thought it'd be worth trying to compare it against some of the other filaments that I've made airless basketballs out of. The first filament I'm going to compare it against is the WizDream FlexiTuff filament. That is the airless basketball on my left hand, and the 3D glute ball is in my right hand. And it was pretty obvious that the FlexiTuff filament bounced better than the 3D glute basketball. So now I'm going to see how it holds up against our reigning champion filament, the Piba filament. And of course, the Piba the filament bounced much higher than the 3D Gloop basketball as well. Next, I wanted to test the durability of the 3D Gloop basketball, and like the other filaments I've tried in the past, I put it through 500 dribbles to see if it would hold up, and it did end up surviving all 500 dribbles that I put it through, but I did have little pieces of plastic shooting out at me as I was dribbling it, so I'll have to take it out to an actual basketball court and see if it would hold up there, but I don't think it will. There was even a point where I was slamming the 3D 3D glue basketball on the floor to try and get it to crack, but you got to be careful when you're testing the airless basketball bounces because there was a time where it bounced right back at me and hit me right in a very painful area, so be careful when you're testing your airless basketball bounces. Well, there you go. I went ahead and made a 3D gloop airless basketball so that you didn't have to, and would we call this a success? I would say yes and no. It did survive the durability testing I put it through, and it did seem to bounce 
okay, but for the price you're paying for this airless basketball, it would be much better to just go with some of the other filaments that I've tested and tried in the past. For everyone who was curious to see if the 3D Gloop worked on the Piba basketball, it did not. The first bounce I gave it, it cracked back open and it didn't seem to do much, so more testing to be done there. I have some other promising filaments coming up, so be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of these future videos, and I will see you in the next one.